Good evening. Welcome to tonight's shear, Arshas Pinchas. And uh, we'll go straight to the questions which have come in during the past week. So someone called me up, uh, texted me on last Friday afternoon, asking about whether it's okay to use a goiro to make decisions. Now, possibly, this as actually for some of them, it's a throw. And so already they were reading Pasha's Minchos uh, last week. says so asking, are we allowed to use Goyrol to make decisions? So actually, it's Mufurish and Shekhanach to the contrary. Uh, here you have in front of you in Simon Kuf Ayn Tes near Adeya. Ein Shoyalin Bechoizim Bechichavim. One should not be consulting stargazers for astrologers for uh, guidance for loy begeralis nor should one be doing lots in other words if you have a totally uh, even one way or the other and say i'll flip a coin it's head or tails if it's heads we're going to um, scotland for holidays and if it's tails we're going to france for holidays that would be um, making a decision random example of making a decision based upon a goyrol, and that, that would not be okay. There are goyrolos where people know about the goyrol hagro, there's a goyrol of, of, of opening sporium. So those are because they are based upon Torah. So there are there, there is license to do that. And there obviously people are using uh, Igris Kodesh and drawing guidance from that. So you can see in Rabbi Gorari, say for Chikrim and Hogim, he talks about that, but just a simple gyro. So this is very interesting that whilst to divide the land where it's a scroll, the gyro was uh, is this, you know, divinely uh, sanctioned. You know, and then you have also, for example, where there would be uh, a question of, let's say Agabe has uh, alias or privileges and there's different candidates for that. So to use a goyal to arbitrate, that is acceptable. And yet when it comes to making a goyal for a ticket, who's going to go to, uh, you know, win a ticket, go uh, to, to the Rebbe, go to, to a Hasna, this kind of goyal is done to arbitrate between A and B to choose who's going to be privileged. But to use a goyal to make your own decision, it's not a Torah-based goyrol, as in like uh, using sforum, etc., just to flip a coin or something like that. So here you have a clear halach and shechon aruch, but that isn't allowed. Let's go on to the next question. And here on last Friday, I have, I'm sitting in the base Hiroya, and I get an unusual phone call. I don't even know who it is. And he says that I'm marrying off a child in the, near, in the next few weeks. And my parents, unfortunately, are divorced, all living in London. My father has several sisters who also live in London. And my mother is uh, insisting that I do not invite her ex-sisters-in-law. Now, she doesn't have, so he tells me, he, she doesn't have an issue with them personally. She gets along with them. They, her, her issue is that her ex-husband should not be able to have the uh, benefit of having his uh, sisters joining in at the Simcha. So he's asking, does he have to listen to his mother about this? Now, actually, in the mitzvah of Kibbut Avraim, the mitzvah is primarily to provide the parents uh, their needs, to honor them and their needs, to respect their needs, etc. But whether a parent can tell me whether to go on holiday to Scotland or to France, there's no, you know, it's, it's nothing to do with their uh, own, own lives. It's just dictating something which I should do in my life. It's not so posture that they really have that um, authority that I'm, I'm, I'm going to listen to them if it's something which doesn't affect them. Doesn't mean you can say best string that it would contradict them but whether they have the authority to dictate how I should do things which are not affecting them is actually quite questionable. But without even taking that route, I saw here that 
it, she, it, it, we have a halacha. Well, here we have between a father and mother. And this is your your there simen reishmemes if you're dalit. If the father and mother both ask him to give them a drink, and so he should give the mother the father before the mother because the mother also has a chiyuv of honoring her husband. However, says the Shekhanach, if they are divorced, then they are equal priority, father and mother. Here, however, I felt that this comes into the next um, uh, halacha, where if the father, or that the mother, tells the son to do an avera, whether it's an avera, misasase, then one should not be listening to the parent to do something against Torah. My feeling is here that, that to, 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 to uh, instruct the son to, to uh, cause pain to the father, that he can't invite his sister, he can't have his sisters coming to the simcha, I think it was, it was uh, out of order. I think it's uh, telling the son to do something which will upset the father. And um, I told him that he can invite his aunts and um, somehow try to calm his mother down that that, that uh, whatever that's a diplomatic issue but fine let's move on so someone asked me some time at the beginning of the week when it comes to kiddush is there an emphasis to drink the whole cup of wine um or is a is, or or not right. so the what you have in front of you is alterebus shikhanaruch the din of, of the Seder night. And here you see very clearly, well, let's to, to, to read this. There are those who say that Seder night, there's a mitzvah to drink the entire cup of wine, even if it contains several times a revere. He says, although Kiddush of other Yom and Tovim and Shabbos, it's enough to drink Malaylugmo, the majority, like a cheekfuls, which is a majority of revered. However, the night of Pesach for the Dal's Pesach. So this is the sheet of the Ramban, who says that the night of Pesach is a different din. And here, it's based upon a notion of the Gemara, about drinking the entire cup or the majority of the cup. Of the saying, when it says in the Gemara about having the majority of the cup, they meant the majority of a revius. And that's the common minhag, to say that even Pesach by night, it's enough to have rave revius. But then the advice in the Next paragraph is the Pesach night. In order to be choshish, the first shitter, that you should finish the whole cup, so better take a smaller cup and drink the whole one rather than having a big cup and only having a Rav Revius, etc. So what boils down to is that Pesach by night, there's an emphasis on drinking Kol HaKois and if not Rav HaKois. That doesn't apply to Shabbos is Vyam and Toivim, there, Lachat Chila, it's Meloy Lugmov, and that's enough. Um, why is there a difference? This I haven't seen in Mephorashim, but I'm just saying and, and suggesting. By other Yom and Toivim, Shabbos in, uh, in Kiddush, the issue here is Shiru you praise Hashem and you have a cup of wine, and that kind of enhances the, 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 the praise. The same thing with benching, the same thing with the chasana. So it's shira ala yayin. Of course, the yayin has the wine has to be in a container. So there is a cup, but the, there isn't the emphasis on the cup. The emphasis is on the yayin, which is an accompaniment to the shira, to the praise. Pesach by night, there is an emphasis on koisus, arba koisus, and it's got to do with koisus of Yeshua, and koisus of, of punishment, whatever the symbolism is in cups. But there's definitely an emphasis on kois, more so than just the fact that it's containing an amount of wine. And possibly because of this, the, according to the first opinion, kois of yain, she should drink the whole cost of a cup of wine. Whereas at other times, it's, they're, they're, that emphasis isn't there. Okay, but that really remains that for the rest of the year, there's no emphasis Dhaka to drink the whole cup or the rave kois. It's rave revius, that's enough. Besides the fact, in any case, uh, other times we usually, if you have a few people around, you're going to be sharing. So you're not going to drink the rave kois. You're not going to drink a whole kois because you're sharing it with other people at the table. But fine, let's move on. So about 12 o'clock, Shabbos, I get a text 
Can I ask a question? So I was still up. So I said, yes. So here's this problem that um, generally we make, we, Abdullah, we use cloves for uh, Basomim. Here's interesting that, first of all, that Ashkid, there's, there's, there's several brachas for fragrance. There's a bracha on food which has a fragrance. And you smell it consciously because you enjoy the fragrance. If it's herbs, if it's a woody substance, then it's and what happens if you don't know which category it falls into? So then we've got so is the generic bracha similar to with foods if it doesn't clearly fall in one category or the other, it says Shahak on the Yerba Devare. Cloves are interesting that they, no one eats cloves on their own. On the other hand, they are included in food, in cooking, and therefore there is a dilemma whether to say the bracha anois reich toiv on cloves because they're food, or to say by the atzi So this is it because of the dilemma, Therefore, the halacha remains that on cloves we make the bracha bayri mine v'sam. Ashkenazim say more bayri mine v'sam regardless, uh, whereas the Sephardim will uh, they will use let's say mint and they'll say bayri isbe v'sam for Matzah Shabbos. So Ashkenazim will say bayri mine v'sam without going into detail what you're smelling. You just you just say bayri bayri mine v'sam without getting into complications. Whereas the Sephardim are more into getting uh, whichever uh, whichever type of spice it is, just say the the specific bracha. So uh, so we make the bracha very mid of somim, and now coming back to our question with babies. So here we have a, this is from the Alter Rebbe's state of Birchas Anenin, and he says the following: Pekud Aleph Halochates, Pilpilin Vezangvil Kedushin, ground pepper. And uh, and the ginger, even though you enjoy their fragrance, some say you should not make a bracha on gin on smelling ginger or pepper. The reason is because pepper and ginger are mainly used for a seasoning for a flavor. It's not common. Einrigilus kolkach. It's not so common for people to pick up a a jar of pepper or ginger to enjoy the fragrance. Hence, they are not oim de they're not designated for fragrance. By contrast, cinnamon and cloves, although they are used in food, but it is common for people to smell them as a fragrance, even not as part of the food. And when also when cinnamon or cloves are put into cooking, so the kavon is not only to enhance the taste, but also to create a, uh, an attractive fragrance. That's part of the reason why we put these ingredients in the, in the food. So what we have here is that a, a spice, which is primarily used for flavor rather than for, for fragrance, should, according to this opinion, does not have the bracha berimin of somim. There are those who disagree and they say it's, it's got a nice smell, so you can make a brocha on it, uh, upon that fragrance. And therefore, one should avoid smelling those things because you're entering in a sophic. Should you make a brocha or should you not make a brocha? And similarly, he says about consciously smelling hot, freshly break, baked bread. So to do that consciously, so you are getting into a shaila, should you make a bracha or not? Because the fragrance of the, of the bread is obviously incidental. It's not why we bake bread to create a nice smell. So coming back to the bay leaves, they are primarily used for flavor rather than for, for smell. And consequently, it's, it's, uh, one should avoid using them and shouldn't make a bracha very many of some, as in the famous rule of um, Sophic Brachas Lahakil. Let's move on to the next question. Okay. Very important question. Now, I'll tell you what happened this past week. It was 
last week was uh, this past week Sunday was a uh, was a fast day with Shiva Osaba towns in one of the provincial communities so they struggle for a minion well they were planning to have a minion Sunday morning it turns out however that they were expecting three or four guests who had come to their town because it was the Hakomas Matseva of their late father. The father and therefore the sons are Koyanim, but they're not fastest. So now if it would be a very awkward position and they might be even be just making up a ten. So to have the Koyanim there, to not give them an Aliyah as Koyan, well that's going to be a problem. Uh, and to, to ask them to leave the room even, well, first of all, if it's only one, but even the, if it's a few of them, um, you might not have your minion. But on the other side, to give them an aliyah, to give one of them an aliyah, but they're not fasting. And uh, that's written in Shukhan Aruch, that one doesn't give an aliyah to, on a fast day to someone who isn't fasting. So here we have a, a dilemma. So I told the, the, the rabbi there, just don't do Kriya Satoya, because strictly speaking, you need to have 10 fasters for Kriya Satoya. And so I want to look at that. And, and you know, this is, however, probably a very common thing you have in smaller communities. People come out to help you with the minion, but they're not going to be fasting. And what do you do? Can you be moved? Make a mitzvah of them to the minion or not. So let's read this carefully in Shulchan Aruch. This is in Simon. Um, it's Simon Tov Kuf Samach Vov. It's missing the the reference is missing on the on the uh, on the sheet. Let's just add it to the side. Well, it says the following. Ein, and now there's two issues here. One is about Aneinu, and one is about Kriya Satoya. And interestingly, Anenu is going to be a bigger concern than Kriya Satoya. And we'll, see, we'll discuss this soon. So the Shukhanor says, As you know, Anenu, as a Yochid, we say that in Shemeya Tefilo, but the Chazan says it as a separate Brocha. To say, for the Chazan to say Anenu is a separate Brocha, it's only said if there are 10 fasters. Now, normally we rely on six people or davening to make up your, uh, and then you have a roiv. That doesn't work over here. You need to have 10 people of fasting. I feel him, yes, that doesn't help. You need to have 10 misanim, 10 fasters in the, in the show. Why is it different to a, a regular minion situation where six daveners make up and in the, that's a rove, then you can have uh, four non-daveners can join in. The difference is that not uh, well, everyone is eligible for davening. In other words, a person, even if they have daven, going to daven, a person is, every person, every year is a davener. Therefore, they can make up the minion, even if they're not davening. When it comes to fasting, well, not every has, one has to fast. If they're not part of the fast, then they are out of the picture. So they can't even join as a minority. Uh, that, that, that similar idea when it comes to zimun. When, it, you, when you want to do a zimun with 10 people, the minority also have to have eaten something. They cannot be mitzahref to a minion if they haven't eaten because they're no mechutonim, if they're not eaten, so what's what they're not mechutonim to eat, not mechutonim to bench uh, at this point. So they it only be mitzar if the uh, if you have seven, there it has to be a river nikot, seven people have washed, and now benching three who have eaten something. Similar idea. Okay, let's come back. Now, now let's read the Mishnah Brura on uh, this uh, halacha. The Shukhanor talks about Aneinu. Mishnah Brura goes into Kriya Satoya, reading Vayachal. So he says, if it's a Monday and Thursday. So that makes it easier. Because in any case, you're going to do Kriya Satoya. Whether you're going to be reading Parshas Pinchas, you're going to be reading 
um, in, in, in Kisiso, you're laning in any case. Therefore, there's no question of Baruch. In other words, there's a slot now for Kriya Satoira. So it doesn't matter which Kriya. It doesn't matter if they're not fasting. Uh, sorry, it doesn't matter if not all of the people are fasting. In the next um, Sif, it says, uh, I mean, Sif Vob, sorry. It says, perhaps in the next slide. Um, yeah, so this is Tafkam Sif Vob, that you should not lay in the town of Tibu, Mishaloi His Anne, if you're not fasting. And if the Koyan is not fasting, he should be leaving the Shul and you have Yisrael instead of him. So, so, so a, a person who's not fasting is not, shouldn't have an aliyah, but nevertheless, that's not so crucial for the Kriya Satoya. So now he says, if there are six fasters in Shul, you can read Vayakhal. By Mincha, then you'd need to have 10 fasters. And he says the same thing would be Shacharis if it's not a Monday or Thursday. That's one opinion. Some say on a Tanis Tzibur, since there's a, it's already Divya Kabbalah, in other words, since it's written in Tanakh, in uh, where is it, Malachi somewhere, that it mentions about the four fasts, which are related to the Korban. So the fasts are kind of very strong uh, occasions that there's here to fast. And therefore, even if not fasting, you, they are also, it's, you can do a Kriya Satoira. And here he says in Mishnah Bura, if there are seven fasters, that's, that's also okay. And if the minority are not fasting because of Choyli, then you can do Kriya Satoira. Right. Now, then we have here in the next piece, he says, Vim yesh bohem echot she'ene mashlim, he shouldn't be saying anein. Okay, I know that the, he says that you can say anein if there's not seven fasters and three who are chaylim. Okay. Now, in the times of the Tzimach Tzedek, there was a, a, some kind of epidemic and the Tzimach Tzedek was very, um, he writes a very strong letter to his son Yosef Yitzchok of, of Ruch, who was apparently quite sickly. And he's talking about the fasting and because of, especially because of the, uh, of the um, um, pandemic, whatever it was. So therefore he's telling people not to fast and you know, on Tisha B'Av, et cetera. And in that correspondence, so there's a correspondence with his son, and there's also a correspondence with the Divri Nechemi of Nechemi of Dubrovna, who was like a colleague of the Tzimach Tzedek. So in this uh, letter of the Tzimach Tzedek, in this tshuva, he says, as far as Vayichal goes, if there are even three people who are fasting, then you can do Kriya Satoya. And it's not comparable to what's discussed in Simatov Kuf Samach Vav, because here, similar to what the Mishnah Buri is saying, because here it's talking about voluntary fasts, or like Bahabi says, which are extra fasts. But if it's Tisha B'av, which is, a more established fast, then Kriya Sator can be done. And now he's, he's more generous than the Mishnah Bruru, who says seven fasters for Kriya Sator. Here he says even three fasters, you can do Kriya Sator. However, it's Anenu, that's more of a problem because it's an extra bracha. And yet the, the Shukhnar says you need to have 10 people. Um, and then if you don't have 10 people, so like if you forgot to say our name, the chazan forgot to say our name in the right place, they incorporate in Shemayat However, he says, if there are three who are fasting properly, so his, his scenario is that Tim is describing, you've got three who are fasting authentically. And then you have another seven who are eating, but Pochas and Kashir, therefore they are technically fasting. Then you could say Ayaneinu. So what you're seeing here is, though, he's not giving him license to say Ayaneinu without 10 fasters by to some fashion. It has to be three proper fasters, and then the others are also fasting after a fashion. Um, it's, it's interesting, Mr. Buru also talks about, well, the Altar Simach is saying the other seven are eating Pochas Mikashir. 
Mishnah Bru is saying if the others who are not fasting is because they are choyden, therefore they, they are um, mitzarev. They, they would have liked to fast, but they're not able to. Okay. Um, now that Simmer Tzedek is summarized in Sefer Hamin Hogim, which is uh, this part, I believe, is, is um, written by the Rebbe, and later put into Sefer Hamin Hogim. And here he spells out, for Vayachal, by Dalad Soimus, if there are three fasters, you can lay in Vayachal. When it comes to Anenu on the Fadal Soimus, then if there are three fasters, well, I'll call upon him. And the way this way I understand is, he's saying that the, the others, there should be seven who have eaten Pochos Mikashir. But it, what it looks like is that if the other seven are not fasting because they're just not interested in fasting, then looks like they're not been starved to the to the minion. So there would be a minion. You could do Kriyas Vayachal, you could do with them, um, possibly, yeah. But to do Aneinu, if you don't have, 10 fasters uh, after some kind of fashion, then you shouldn't be saying Anena is a separate bracha. You should be uh, putting Anena just in, in Shemeya Tefillah. Um, what comes back about this story with the, so with the Koyanim, say if not for the political problem, that you can't give them Koyan because they're not fasting. So he could have done Kriya Satayra with three fasters if he had. Um, I just felt in, in the circumstances, I don't know if he had three pastors, if, if he did, but in the circumstances to get into a whole polity with the Kohen and with his visitors, and uh, better just to go into the Ikar Hadin uh, and say we're not going to do Kriya and I'm sure no one would be terribly upset about it. Okay, let's come to one of the questions. Um, when trying to sell a house, this is going back to the very minute of summing question, when trying to sell a house, it's common practice to bake bread to make the house smell nice. What bracha would one say? Interesting question. Second point, so it's a shulling press, and no one was fasting. They couldn't, ever, anyone on leave, well, they shouldn't have been doing Kriya Satoira. Um, yeah, what would happen if Kriya Satoira is taken out? There's no fasters. I don't know. Yeah. I think you'd have to put it back. Do hagba. Uh, you can do hagba. That you can do. Um, yeah. Let's move on. Now, here's a very nice question. Uh, I shouldn't. Someone asked me this question, and I thought it's valuable to to, to share. So, does um, I'm going to close those windows, not to be disturbed from the noise. Okay, so here's the question. Tisha B'Av, which works out on a Sunday, whether it's um, scheduled on a Sunday or whether it's well, what we instruct and it's pushed off to the Sunday, what, what does not do about half dollar? So we all know that you do a half dollar on Sunday night. And this is written in Shechon Aruch. Leil Tishabob Shechol Be Echad Bashabis. If the eve of Tishabob is on the Sunday, so then you bring out a candle, you make a broch of Bayrim Oire Ha'esh, no broch on Besomim, and Motzah Tishabob, one makes half dollar on a cup of wine. And and Motzah Tishabob, no broch on the flame nor on Besomim. And for that matter, whenever the Havdola is delayed to Sunday or later, so the brocha is only on the wine and on the uh, the long brocha or Havdola, but when it misses out, the brocha on the flame and Besomim. So let's come back to our question. So actually, this, this halacha, which we're reading in Shurnar, has a dova ha-poshut. It's going to say poshut. And there... There is a Ramban and the Rashba apparently who say, no, 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 wait a minute. When Tishabov is on Shabbos, so when Tishabov is on a Sunday, there's no Chiyav of Abdullah. Abdullah is, 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 it doesn't apply on Motzah Shabbos, 
And the Ramban brings out brings in a fascinating uh, background to this, now an argument. We have originally you have the mitzvah of Havdola was just in Tefillah. It's in Brachas Lamed Gimel. And then Ha'ashiru, when he didn't became more comfortable financially. So they said, you know what, let's do have dollar with a cup of wine. And then there was a stage when Eden became poor again. And they said, you don't have to do have dollar and wine, it's enough with filler. And so it seems to have been that where people are, where the population, where the, uh, the community is poor, then you can suffice with have dollar with a bit just in Shmonest. You don't have to have dollar like yeah. Says the Ramban, well, Tishabov. We're all like the poor people. And therefore, there's no need for Havdola Lakos. It's enough to have Havdola in, in, uh, in Davening. So, according to the Ramban, when Tishabov coincides with, when, when Tishabov is, uh, is on a Sunday, the fast of Tishabov on Sunday, Havdola is suspended. There's no no, no of Havdola. Here, what you have the Rosh on the, on the page we have over here. He disagrees, and that's the background to the Halach and Shekhar, and says you do have to do Havdala, and it's, it's the next night. And if you can see here, the Ramban, sorry, the Rosh, he quotes a story of a Rabbeinu Yehuda, who was once an Oinen. He lost a relative, and passed away on Shabbos, which meant that Motzi Shabbos, he was an Oinen. And an owner does not have to do have dollar, cannot does not bottom color mitzvahs. So he ate Matzah Shabbos without have dollar. The Levaya took place on Sunday morning, and they after the Levaya, the Talmudim said to him, Rebbe, why don't you do have dollar now? To which he answered, I only have to do have dollar as a hashloma if I was obliged to do it yesterday and I didn't manage to do it. So now I'll do a hashloma. But if I was exempt from Havdola at the time when it was uh, applicable, then I don't have to do Hashloma for something which I was exempt at the moment, when it was, you know, they were original here. So, according to that, you could say that with Havdola on Motzah Tishabov, since it's been suspended at Motzah Shabbos, therefore, it's suspended on, on, on Sunday night also. That's what you could argue. So the uh, Rosh finishes off. Says, Don't compare one to the, don't compare Havdola of Motsu Tishabov to Havdola of an Oinen. Because by the Oinen, he himself was exempt of any mitzvahs. And therefore, when he becomes eligible, those mitzvahs which were in a state of exemption don't come back again. Similarly, an oinam is onish vissen. If he didn't say birchas hashachar after the levai, he doesn't say birchas hashachar either, because birchas hashachar at the time he was exempt, and therefore he doesn't have to say them later. But birchas hatorah he does have to because he's going to be learning torah it. Avol at any rate come back. Avol hocha gufe michayev. The rosh is saying no. When it comes to tishabov. Motzei Shabbos, really, you do have to do have dollar. It's only that because it's very fast, you're not you're not able to do have dollar. But it's, it, in a sense, he's saying the have dollar is incumbent. It is a it is obligatory. It's just that you can't fulfill your obligation, but the obligation is there, and therefore, as soon as that uh, obstruction it, it goes away, so then you'd take um, you you have to do have dollar there. Okay, so this is a bit of background to this discussion about making Havdol. Now, I'm going to read from you the next slide from the new Gabriel, and let's see whether we're okay with it. So he writes, first of all, that a chayl who eats on Tisha because it's unwell, has to make Havdolah. Someone who's not fasting at all will make Havdolah ready months of shops. Then he goes into the second paragraph, or the sixth paragraph, no shim, women who do need to eat on, um, on Tisha B'Av can eat without Havdolah. And what say Tisha B'Av or hear Havdolah? Some say they should hear Havdolah before eating, and the husband can make Havdolah 
and he might see her and a child and a child to drink the wine. And then he says, if there's no man, then she can make Havdola herself. So it's a little bit all over the place. And this goes to our discussion last week about women making, I've got a certain uh, a version about women making Havdola. And so that we don't, the Kunt Kalt Rebbe, that's not an issue. So, so He, he, what his hesitation is possibly the following. Possibly there's no real chile. A woman doesn't have a chile of Avdol, according to one opinion. But just like she can make a bracha on a lulav during the days of Sukkot, so she can make a bracha on a shefer and a shana. So even though it's not a chile, she can make a bracha. So the same thing, even though it's not to do Avdol, she can elect to do it. So he says, yeah. That's all very well if there's a chiyuv, but according to the Ramban, who says there's no chiyuv of Avdala on, on Tisha B'av until, until Motsa Tisha B'av. No, sorry, he says no chiyuv on Tisha B'av. So he wants to say perhaps there's no chiyuv at all on Tisha B'av. And therefore it's like if you want to bench Lulav on Hanukkah, you can't elect to do so. It, when there is a chiyuv on the, on, on, on the um, man, so then a woman can elect to do the mitzvah. But when there's no chiyuv, so then, uh, so then she, she she can't elect to do a mitzvah when there's no chiv at all. But I, I feel he's he's he's, uh, he's he's wrong because once we've paskened like the rosh, the shuknoch paskens like the rosh, and clearly the, he said you can see the words of the rosh is saying that there is a chiv. It's just that you can't address it. So it's not as if there's no chiv of the man to make havdala. He does a chiv, have a chiv, and therefore I believe that I would I would go along with the second opinion that and. In the, perhaps a little further, that if a, a woman needs to hear Havdala, because she's not fasting, so either make her on, if she wants on, 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 on grape juice, or better, perhaps she should use um, a cup of coffee, which is Khamar Medina, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, to avoid the question of having uh, wine during the nine days. Um, or else, the, if she's not comfortable to do that, he could make Havdala, and she would, so the alternative is the husband would make Havdala, also in a cup of coffee, but he's fasting. So, all right, he'll make the bracha, shakal new bedvore, and she'll drink the, she'll drink the coffee. After he's finished uh, making Havdala, he'll, he'll put down the cup and she'll, she'll drink the coffee. The, the importance of drinking is that otherwise it's a bracha of But, and, and so if the husband makes Havdala, um, and the wife drinks because she's um, she's not fasting. Okay, so that that would be legitimate, and uh, he would then not have to make havdala on motzi tishabov because he's ready to be yotza with havdala. So basically, what I'm saying is, contrary to what Nitzchak Avril is concerned about this shit of Ramban, the halacha remains in Shuknoch like the Rosh that there is a chiyuv havdala, and it's just. We can't do it on our own. So, but if we have, we make Havdol on a child who's over the age of Chinuch, or a woman, or for that matter, a man who's, who's not fasting, uh, and he's not able to make Havdol themselves, so then you can make Havdol for them. They drink it. That would be uh, that would be okay. So, yeah. So the the, the answer is um, what well, this person said. He gave the uh, uh, the wine last time. It was this Kviyas. He gave the uh, his son. To drink the wine, so yes, well, if the son is over the age of chinu, so then his drinking justifies the bracha. It's not a bracha of atala because he's the age of chinu of brachas, and then the wife and the son uh, are able to eat, and the husband who made the uh, havdala, he's also been yotzah havdala, and he doesn't need to make havdala on motzei uh, tans. Okay, let's go on to our next question. Um, so, question came in yesterday. Was it? That they, in one of the provinces, they have a food bank. In the middle of a year, can you put it later? So they have a food bank, and they they were contacted by an oval home on Rahman Lislan, and they said that the people have been bringing so much food, it's much more than they need, and the food bank is welcome to take that food and, dis and uh, distribute it 
to poor people, uh, as the food bank does generally with, with surplus foods from various places. So the background to this question, which is a good question, is now what you have in front of you is the, uh, the Sefer El Yorabo. El Yorabo is a commentary on the Levush. So in Simen Reish Chof Dalet, the end of those, those Reish Chofs are the various brochas, so one of the brochas which is discussed is when one sees a, uh, a, a cemetery, so there's a brocha uh, which we have when we go to a cemetery, we have that brocha of Mechaya Mesim. So um, in, in that context, in that area of the Shekhanor, so the El Yerabo quotes um, from a source, Noyagin not to take a dover cotton the godl me base of all. It's customary not to take anything from the Avel home during the seven days of Avelus because there's a Ruach Hatuma, which is uh, clinging to the whatever is those home the, the, for the seven days. So there's an ancient minhik of not taking anything away from the base of. So that's the background to the question. So in the Sefer um, Shmir's Gufa Nefesh, so he brings Poskim who say that this only applies if uh, it's the house where the person actually passed away, where Yitzhia Sanashama took place. Um, so I don't know what the circumstances were over there, but that's, that's first of all, if that wasn't the place of Yitzhia Sanashama, then you already have a clear header to give away the food. The second thing I felt, though, even uh, others say that they, they are more dismissive over this whole thing, and for all of that food to go to waste, rather than giving it to poor people, I think it would override the consideration which we have here about Ruach HaTuma, and um, one, one should be allowed to give it to the Aniyim. Are you going to ask, are you allowed to give Aniyim um, questionable stuff? Well, you do have a Mishnah, Mafarnasim, you give Dmai um, um, to, to Aniyim, you're allowed to give Dmai. Okay, let's move on. So, Last week, we spoke about the uh, Beis Chabad who wants to expand and use the premises, which was previously used by, uh, by Salvationists. And someone raised the question during the year, but what about paying rent to these, this church? You are effectively supporting the church. And I dismissed the question. And I'm going to come back to that now. Um, and someone came back to me during the week and said they had a situation many years ago, it must be about 30 years ago plus, no more, more than that, um, because they were thinking perhaps they asked Rabbi Dvorkin. They live in a small community and the only swimming pool, which is uh, non-mixed, is belonging to the church and they want to teach the children to swim and they asked are they allowed to use that pool and they were told not to. And they understood that the, the psaac was because by paying dues for using this, the pool, they are supporting the activities of the tumor, uh, etc. So they asked if so, then that's contrary to what I'd, I'd said, that it's not a problem. So here we have from Simon Kufmim Gimel Yeridea talking about a garden, a bathhouse, which belongs to the Avez Kechovim. And it talks of the difference whether the benefit of your payment whether your payment is going to go to the um, to the priests or it's going to go to the to the users, to the to the community, but then that's the mechaber. The main thing I want to share with you with is there are more. The yesh oimrim. There are those who are more lenient and they say that you are allowed to have benefit from that facility of the vedazara, uh, the the garden, their bathhouse even if the benefit which you're paying is going to go to the priests. And the only problem is if it is part of the complex of Chotza Vedazara. You mustn't enter the complex of Vedazara, even if it's a bath house. But if it's part of the, evidently, and obviously part of the complex of Vedazara, you wouldn't have to go in. But if it's not adjacent to the Vedazara, even though the benefit is going to go to the priests, uh, the, uh, the Zara, then you would be allowed to have benefit from it, unless the benefit is going to be for the Avedizara itself, whatever that means. But, but yes, listen, Michal Zelohakel. 
So the Halacha, the Ramo says, and Ashkenazim, we follow the Ramo, that you are allowed to um, pay for your benefit, even though the benefit is going to go to the to the clergy of the Adav Zara. Now then, the ba, again, the, in the Shach, on that piece of Shulchan Aruch, he says the following. The Bach is Machmir, um, where they, if, if the only customer for this benefit would be the Yidden, then you wouldn't be allowed to give them the benefit. If the Abedazora garden, a farm, if you wouldn't buy the, that produce, if you wouldn't bathe in that pool, there would be other customers. So then you are allowed to use, you're allowed to buy the produce, you're allowed to bathe in that. What he's saying is, if that facility is available for the open market, therefore you cannot be uh, held guilty of supporting the Avedazara in their activities, where it was, if you wouldn't be the customer, it'd be someone else. So coming back to that apartment that 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 um, we we're talking about that that base Chabad, it's a it's a it's an apartment which is available for the for the public to to rent, and if you wouldn't rent it, someone else would rent it. So you can't say that you are crucial to the to the activities of the Avedazara in that area. That seems to be the psak. And what happened to that swimming pool? Why did the Rav tell them possibly the swimming pool was uh, actually? Part of the complex of the of that church, and that was the reason for being told not to patronize it. Someone is asking this here to make our dollar after now the the the, the um, approach of the Ramban in he's saying that coming going back to Havdola, yeah. The approach of the Ramban here is saying that there's no Khiv Havdola because it's suspended at the time of Motsa Shabbos, then you don't have to do Hashlom. You only have to do Hashlom for something was a Chiv at the time. But he's saying it's suspended at the time. Therefore, there's no Chiv to do it on Motsi Sunday either. Um, someone's asking the question, what about accepting a cold drink on the premises from or not even a closed bottle? Um, In, in, in the church premises, the, the answer would be no, you shouldn't be uh, having, you shouldn't be in there altogether, if that's the question. Right. Um, thank you about the information from Manchester. I didn't know whether it was about that house or a different house. Okay, let's move on. Um, are we holding? Oh, I've lost my picture. Wasn't the question about the Salvation Army that they are themselves of a desire? Yeah, but they're they're uh, they're um, the point is that that what we said was that um, the question was whether the rental is going to support their activities. There's two issues. One is about to use the premises, and that we went through whether it's considered tashmish avedazar. But that we went through. But then the question there is, what, what about the rental? Isn't that supporting the activities of the tumor? So how can you the answer, use this? The answer over here is that since it's an, a, a product which is open on the open market, the fact that you are buying that product instead of someone else buying that product, that is saying is, is said that it's okay. That addresses the benefiting, but how are you able to enter the premises? So that we just discussed last week that it was disused. And they had mm. taken away their their their, their tailor. Uh -huh. they, they had is no longer. They had been mavatal it. If it was uh -huh. ever considered tashmisha uh, bedazora by them taking away the tailor, they'd be mavatal it. On top uh -huh. of it, which I said, since they're not actually worshiping a an, a, an icon, they're just it's more an abstract form of worship. Therefore, it didn't become. There's no chefts of avedazora. The uh -huh. worship itself is avedazora, but there's no chefts of avedazora. Let's move now to the next question. Um, and this, it's interesting how one brings to the other, somehow. And Ingeman in, actually is an Eretz Yisrael, Chassidish uh, Ingeman, highly, highly uh, qualified in music. 
and this is his Gansa Chayas, his Chsidisha music. But meanwhile, he has the following question. As part of his experience in, in, in music, he, he listens also to classical music, whatever it may be. And there are sometimes recordings of music which have been performed in a, in a church using the church organ and whatever other instruments which are normal in a church. And his question is, am I allowed to listen to a recording of music, of secular music, not religious music? And it was made in there because of the equipment and because of the acoustics are good. And this is his question. Are you allowed to have benefit from it? So really, this is a hemshuk to what we just now discussed. Yeah, there's a question here. If it's a Aveda Zara, then the musical instruments are also Meshamshi Aveda Zara. And as a result, you wouldn't be allowed to have Anur. And listening to music produced by Meshamshi Aveda Zara would be, uh, would be awesome. However, he, he, he showed me this Marachir um, Zarua, who quotes the Loshan, Goyim Shebuchutz Lo'oretz are not really Oivdi Aveda Zara, it's Minigav Yisem Bideyem. And Marachir Zarua says, therefore, there's the din of Meshamshi Aveda Zara. The Aveda Zara, you see the bottom line, second line from the bottom, the Aveda Zara is Aveda Zara. But the idea that the Avodah Zorah seizes the articles, that they become also Osur because of Misham Shevet Zorah, he says that doesn't apply because it, it, it's Bechutz Laaretz. I said to him further that if you could just find out which form of worship this temple is, if it's a place where there are Getchkes, then there is Avodah Zorah, then the musical instruments are Misham Shevet Zorah. If it's again, like I described before and last week, I don't want to indulge too much in it, um, if it's more an abstract form of worship without um, bowing down to actual icons, then there's no din, no chefts of Avedazara, and therefore there's no musical instrument. The musical instruments don't become Mishamshe Avedazara, and therefore they're Muta Bahanur. So that was my answer to him. Okay, um, our last question for tonight is um, and Moyle asked me, what's the story about when well, we know? Part of the Simcha of Abris is the Moyel comes to the Shul and uh, uh, Moyel comes to Shul and Abris today, so no Tachna. Before reading this further, just to finish, all the question was about a drink in the base of Oval. That's an interesting question. I would think that uh, that would be okay. The whole thing, the Ekpeda is to take it away. I'll just tell you, I, I heard once uh, Svora that the reason why they made this whole thing about not taking from Beis HaOvel is because people used to sometimes um, take benefit and fill their pockets with uh, bits and pieces from the Beis HaOvel. But um, yeah, so I think if it's inside, the whole, they're not included in the Kepeda. I'm not taking things out, so that would be okay. Let's, uh, let's come back to the, the, the question about, uh, so here's the question. If the Moyal is there for uh, in Shul, so at Shacharis, we don't say Tachnun because there's a Moyal present. Or for that matter, if the Sandik or the Avi Ben is present, we don't say uh, Tachnun at Shacharis. When it comes to Mincha, the bris is over, and they, the uh, immediate celebrants, the, the Avi Ben, the Sandik and the Moyal, they don't say Tachnun at Mincha, but everyone else does. Here the question is, a Moyal had done an early morning bris, and now he comes to shul after he's done a day's work, and now he comes to shul afterwards. And is that shachris? Says the moyel by shachris. There's a moyel there, but it happens to be shachris after the bris is done already. So this was the dilemma. My my uh, feeling was that the difference between shachris and mincha is because typically shachris is before the bris and mincha is after the bris. It's not always the case, and so that's that's the question. Um, Bichlal, why is it not discussed extensively? Because typically in the, in the Alta Haim, there would be one minion in town, uh, and that was in the morning, and the bris would be right afterwards. This idea of, of hopping around from one place to the other, doing a bris here and, doing a, and, and coming to Shachlis later, wasn't so common, certainly in the smaller towns. It wasn't, so it wasn't a common uh, uh, issue. But meanwhile, what we have here is uh, from Shevet Halevi, from Rav, the late Rav Bosner, Zechren Levrocha, and this is in Chelik Ches of Simon Chofdalet, and he addresses a similar question, a few questions there about Tachnun uh, in relation to Bris. 
And here he says about a Sandik who was at a bris before Shacharis, and then he went to, da to Daven elsewhere. Now he says, Le'ira Cheres. So Hadas Noita, or perhaps his Rosh Tevis Hadas Torah Noita, um, that since it's after the bris and is somewhere else, therefore he sh they, they should be saying Tachanun there. Perhaps if you see still the traces of the Simcha, my question is, your Baal Simcha, you know, if, if you're, you know, the Baal says you don't see a difference between Shabbos and the weekdays so much. But if you're a person who wears a Shrimal, if you're Baal Simcha, why are you not wearing Shrimal? If, you, if you're still wearing your Shrimal, your Bekesha, you know, if so the Simcha is still, um, yeah, it's, it's Baal Simcha. But if he's, you know, back into regular civil, civilian clothes, um, so it looks like the Simcha has, uh, is in the past. So that's what they, he seems to be saying a similar idea that that the uh, once the once the bris is over, the shachris after the bris, the moyal um, himself would not say tachnon, but there's not a reason for exemption for everyone else. So I'll start with that and wish you all a good evening and a good Shabbos and Yehovchu Yom Eila Le Sosin Le Simcha Sechzene Ineinu B'Shulcha Le Tzim Berachamim. Uh, good shoulders. Mm -hmm.